that we're going to make a plate with today is three eighths of an inch thick. And I know everybody's like, that's, that's too thick. And if anybody has questions over there, Jeff, certainly let me know. And those of you just tuning in, to those of you just tuning in, I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips of Clayshare, and I'm doing a demo at Enseca, although I'm in Vermont. So, <laughs> I, woo, I'm doing a demo for Jeff at GR Pottery Forms at his booth. Um, so, exactly. It's, it's, we're doing things that we never thought we could do because of technology. So, this slab, I had to smooth it out to get rid of the canvas texture that's on here, but also you want to do that. It aligns the particles of the clay. It also helps prevent cracking and warping. And if your clay is a little dry, it'll help to soften the clay up a bit too. So it does lots of good things for you. And this was about, let's see, I rolled out 12 pounds of clay and this was about two thirds of it. So this is about eight pounds of clay rolled out. And this would make a great big platter and still have leftovers for smaller things, but we're gonna use it to make some smaller plates. So I like to always lay them out. So this, if I cut this shape out, I'll use this as my form. If I cut this shape out, I'll use this as my form. And then I cut this shape out, I'll use this as the form. And then we'll cut this shape out. So I can get five plates off this sheet and still have excess clay for other things, whether it's making feet for those plates or if it's going to be making little cuties. I can do that too. All right, so I'm just gonna pull these off, smooth it out again, because I did, when I set them down, I did put a little mark here and there, but that's no worry, just take care of that. And then, uh, I'm feeling like mushrooms today. Now, you, might not realize it, Jeff knows this, but you can put amazing texture in your clay and it will stay there with the GR Pottery Forms. They don't ruin the texture at all. Although if you don't wanna use texture, like I'll show this one again, you can just do some, some Mishima inlay. So I'm just gonna roll this across the surface. Oftentimes I'll just roll by the handle, but if you have problems getting a really good deep texture, you can just roll it like this, where you kind of walk it and make sure you get above the clay because if you are pushing outward, not down, you're not gonna get a great impression. So I'm gonna do one this way and we'll do it this way. Whole field of mushrooms. Ooh, that sounds good. What else is in that mushroom beignet, Jeff? That they have that at Enseca, huh? Oh my God, Jeff. Jeff, you're having a truffle and caviar beignet. That's very fancy. Wow, fancy food at Enseca today. It is. Every day is a mushroom day. So this will be for the next plate down, right? So I cut that one out, and then we'll do this one here. It doesn't matter if, as far as orientation goes unless you're really trying to come up with a specific layout. We're gonna go all the way down to the cutie size with these. So I hope the folks at Enseca can see okay. How's the, am I getting a little off screen for you? <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's really cool. So, at, so Enseca today is, it's the cup sale. Yeah, that's so it's early out there. So there we have our little slab. How cute that is, right? And then the other slabs, you know, you just pull them off and 
I'm going to have plenty of excess clay, so I'll be able to make more. And I'm just going to pull these off quickly. And I'm looking at this one and I'm really wanting to do a little something else. So the great thing about when you're putting texture and you're not limited, you can add more texture onto the texture. Let me just slide this off to the side. So I got this, but I have got down here a little stash of texture stamps that I made. So you can take those and decide you want to do a band of texture going across. Get, get creative. Mix and match your textures. So now we've got mushrooms with uh, a little stamping happening. All right, so this was the biggest one, and I'm going to use this size. See how I'll have a nice, have a nice rim happening there. So folks on ClayShare are watching. I'm talking with Jeff at Enseca, so it might seem kind of like a strange one-sided conversation happening. <laughs> but it's not, I promise. It's perfectly normal. Right? <laughs> what is normal, exactly? So flip it over. And then, how are we on time? What are we doing, Jeff? How much time do you have for me today? No, oh my. 30, 40, 50, huh? <laughs> oh, well. I mean, I've got, uh, we're, <laughs> I've always got more things to make. So I'm just going to use this rib to smooth the sides. And something Jeff taught me because I didn't know this, you should always pull it towards you. So I was using the forms for a little while before I realized that I was not doing this. It, it, yeah, it can make such a difference though. And then if you want a foot on it, you can put a foot on it. You don't have to put a foot on it. You just let it dry. Depending on your studio's humidity, my studio, in the summer, it's very humid here. and the winter, it's not because I run a heater. So things will dry really fast. I could leave this as is, and in a few hours, it'll be dry enough to turn over. Or I can cover it with, yeah, or I can cover it with plastic, and it'll dry much slower, and then I can work on it tomorrow. But let's do another. <laughs> So Jeff is saying, those of you who are watching on ClayShare, that the, their palette has not arrived at Enseca yet. <gasps> oh no! So you had... <laughs> well, thank, thank goodness you have a local distributor you could go get supplies from. So go to grpotteryforms.com if you need to get forms. <laughs> so I could use the little tiny cutie on this and have a big rim, or I could use the same one that I cut my shape with for pressing in, and this will give me less of a rim, but a bigger floor space for a dish, which sometimes you want that. And you think about this, it's going to give you a deeper dish, seemingly deeper, but less floor space. And so I'm just going to press this. And this is a quick and easy way, especially for folks who are just starting making pottery. Oh, maybe they come over here. Press it down, and then you flip it over. Sometimes I'll take a sponge and just give it a little wipe. And everybody, I like, I'm using Laguna B Mix 5 um, because they do make a 10. And it doesn't have grog in it, although the groggy version works great too. I um, partial to the no grog, but the, 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 the grog's all right. Now the specs are something I'm really interested in. So now we have this little cute dish. 
and if we take a damp sponge, we finish our edge now. So what I love about hand building with the forms is that you can make a piece and be done with it and not have to come back and fiddle with it if you want to. Like you can just be finished. So I'm just going to use this sponge to smooth the edge. And then I'm going to do a little fanciness. Ready? We're just going to do a little pinch our edge. Look at that right there. How cute. So it's a cute little pinched edge dish. Could take it further if you wanted to add more ruffles along the side. You know, you could pinch in here and here and do a full ruffle dish. But on this little triangle one, that's very fun to make a little pinch mark there like that. So we've got this little guy too. So let's see, we got, we got more. We got more clay, this one. So let's use... This was the one we just made using the same form that we cut it with, we pressed it with. I'm going to use the same form but drape it so you'll see the difference you can get using just one form. You can get two different size plates. But i got to grab another work board. Can you guys see? Okay. <laughs> no, don't scare her. Yes, so uh, we could use this one, but we're going to use this one here. And I'm going to drape it. And I just eyeball the edges. If you want to measure with a ruler, you can. Um, and I flip. Pat it, pat it down gently. So if anybody is in, uh, in California near Sacramento, if you hurry, you can get to Enseca today. You can get to the Enseca conference and see Jeff there. You can get a one-day pass. Do they do a half-day pass for Enseca? A one-day pass. So it starts at 9 a.m. and goes to 4 today? 4.30. 4.30, the resource. Well, yeah, because the Ansika, not only is it the resource hall, you've got galleries, you've got shows, you've got lectures, you've got all kinds of things going on. So. I do recommend, if you've never been to Enseca, that you at least try to go once, at least once in your life, because it's, it's like nothing else. It really is. You know, you're there with thousands of other potters. I don't know what the turnout is this year. Last time I went, we had 7,000 people attend. I don't, I guess they probably don't have that many this year, but there's still a lot of people. All right, Jeff's saying 2,700 people at Enseca this year is what they're saying. So that's still a lot of people. We're going to put a foot on this one. Yes. So for the folks that couldn't make it this year to Sacramento, to Enseca, next year's Enseca, which happens around the same time, it's always in March, is going to be in Cincinnati. So it's the middle of the country, which will be really nice for folks that might not want to travel so much. So we're going to do a triangle foot. Yes. Oh. Diamond Core folks at Enseca are right next to Jeff. Their, their booths are right next to each other. I love it. I love it. So if I had gone this year, I could have demoed for one and then the other just stepped to the side. I wouldn't have had to go very far. So 
So that's a great neighbor, Jeff, for you to have next to, to be next to Diamond Core. <laughs> Hello, Scott people. They're the <laughs> Too funny. They made it. So I'm going to make another, I'm going to make another strip for feet. And this is just a corn on the cob holder, corn cob holder, that's been modified. I know Jeff sells them. So you can buy one from Jeff. I have a tutorial to teach you how to make one. Um, but I have a warning because I use power tools and it's sometimes terrifying to see me use like, I'm great at making pottery and running kilns, but for some reason, me and power tools is a little scary. I don't know. That's why I'm not a woodworker. It'd be, it'd be too dangerous. <laughs> I like tools, and I like making things, but uh, things that are powered are loud kind of freak me out. I think it's the noise of power tools. I agree. Power tools can be scary. So normally when I make them, so people always ask, when do you just, yeah, go ahead, interrupt Jeff. Yeah. Awesome. No, no. So people will ask, when do I decide to do a pressed plate versus a draped plate? And really it's the size. It used to be I pressed them all. Even 17 inch platters I was pressing, which is a little crazy. And that was before I had Jeff's forms and I was doing my own thing. And once I, I discovered Jeff's forms, I realized, oh, you can just drape them. You don't have to press them. <laughs> I didn't know that. I was thinking you had to press everything, uh, you know. You, yeah. So the press plates are nice because they have this immediacy. We press it into the foam and then you have your plate right there. With the draping, you often have to let it set up a little bit because the form, you know, we really conformed it to the shape and we want to let it set up. Plus it's bigger, but I think this one I can get away with. Let's just give it a try. Let's see if I can flip it. It's a little plate. We should, but if you flip yours over, too soon and you get sagging, put it right back on. That's what I always tell folks. Put it right back on. And if you turn it out earlier, sometimes if you want to add, I was talking about the ruffles, right? This is when you can add your ruffles. You pull it out a little sooner. Hi Gretchen. So I've never I've never met never met Gretchen. I'm gonna wait. Hi Gretchen. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, I've heard a lot about to you. All good, of course. Oh, so so good. I'm glad Gretchen made it. So this is just you know playing with shape and putting ruffles into a dish. So it's definitely making it like a candy dish is what I think of when I add these ruffles to it. But again, you don't have to, you could have, we could have left it. And here it is. Yeah. Yeah, so when you're making plates and you're thinking about the shape you're making, whether you put a foot on it or not, you know, something like this, because it is, 
now it has the ruffles. Of course, it didn't have the ruffles when I put the foot on it, but now that I did ruffle it, it just makes more sense that it has a foot because it is a little fancier, right? Something like this, no foot, it's a little simpler. It does have a little something happening, but it's a simpler form. It would be, you could do all the ruffles, but it would look a little, a little too much for such a small dish. Exactly, uh, great. Right, if you're having like the problems with it looking uneven or you think your rim is uneven, if you do the ruffles to it, you definitely will not be able to tell because, oh yeah. So this is the interesting part right here. So they're, they're the same form. So I cut the shape out with this one and then pressed it I cut the shape out for this with the neck size up, but I pressed it with, I draped it over this. So this was the one that was inside both forms, but we have a much bigger dish, seeming dish here, although the floor space or the bottom is the same. So this, but this would hold more because you could fill it up because it has the side walls. So you could eat more food out of this or have more cookies on this maybe because you could pile them up. And so I saw there's um, folks asking about warping. You know, if you take it off the form too soon, sometimes you can get warping, especially with the bigger ones. I definitely leave them on a little longer. The other thing that I do is I use what I call weight bags, which are just homemade weight bags. They just hold everything down and they, um, I put them on when it's leather hard after it's off the form and I let them set usually till it's completely dry. And I'll, I'll grab one to show you, this is one. I mean, I make them from shirt sleeves and uh, t-shirts, and this one was, this is very high tech and takes a lot of skill to make. I cut a shirt, and this is the front part of the shirt into a square, filled it full of kitty litter, grabbed the corners and elastic banded it. So yeah, no sewing skill necessary. So it was a joke about the high tech. <laughs> Yes. So the weights definitely help, I've found, especially when you don't have a footed bottom, you have a flat bottom, because as it's drying, sometimes they'll try to curl up into a shape um, and you'll get a little rocking, and by weighing it down, it just forces it to stay flat. But I have to tell you all, I made, a, I did a demo piece during Clay Share Con using the DR Pottery Forms and I forgot to take it off the form for a week. I forgot, I completely forgot. That week after Clay Share Con was kind of a blur. So I, I had it in the studio. <laughs> it was in the studio and I, I'm working on recovering from Clay Share Con. I can't guarantee I am. I actually am still really wiped out. It's a crazy, but uh, it, Clay Share Con was really fun. And I mean, it's well worth it. So I've been, combining stamps, homemade stamps with textures lately. So I've got leaves, got some leaves. Yeah. Any clay. I hate that I say that any clay is a good clay for draping. But um, the thing is that when you're, you're draping over that you can make any clay work for you. You can use porcelain and that will work. You can use a nice groggy stoneware and that will work. You could use earthenware, high fire clay. It's just getting to know that clay itself, right? So getting to know your materials um, and how to work with it. That's really, that's really the trick. So I just did a double row of
I firmly believe in supporting your local clay supplier. You know, I go to Vermont Ceramic Supply. They're about an hour from me up in Rutland. They're a small family-run company. They don't um, even take credit cards or debit cards. You've got to pay by cash or check. They don't have an online presence at all. They're only, you walk in their door and they have on, only, they only open a few hours, a um, few days a week. So, you know, but they'll get me any clay I want. They can order me what I need. Yeah, and you know, some of the clay I use, not everybody can get the clay I use. That doesn't mean the clay I use is magic or special because you can't get it. It just is, I'm in the East Coast and it's what my distributor can get and carries. So it's all dependent on, on that. So I do encourage you to use what's available locally because if you need to order especially online, you can run into some big issues with supply and it could be really hard to get you the materials you want and it's just much nicer. Plus, it's always better to support local businesses when you can. So I'm going through, go ahead, Jeff. So Jeff's chatting everybody on a clay share that's listening in. So I don't know. They can't hear you. No, no, you, Jeff. No, no, you keep, you keep doing, doing, I'm looking for a certain specific sprig mold that I had on Wednesday um, to make a foot. It's the, uh, so you saw me use this stamp in the piece to do texture. Oh yeah, no, finish your question. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yes. Yeah warping. So on this piece here, I put a foot on using the foot maker, but I'm going to, I could do feet with sprigs and you can buy sprig molds or you can make sprig molds. Here's some that I made and I was looking for the stamp I used. I do have a sprig mold class. Yes. So, and a stamp making class and a couple of them actually, because we've made a lot of stamps together on clay share. So I was looking for I made a sprig from this stamp and you can make stamps from sprigs and sprigs from stamps so you can have positive and negative negative. and I know I had this out during the broadcast on Wednesday but I don't know where I put it back at but I used this on the front and I thought oh this would be really nice to use as a the sprig as the foot but I don't I don't know where I put it but it would be nice thinking about the relationship between the texture on the front so we're going to do something a little different and you might be thinking, why am I putting a ball in the center of this triangle? But I have found that the little 
points on the edge here, if you just do a tiny foot, it's not quite enough support. And you do get a little sagging sometimes. When I do a full foot, it's fine. But for whatever reason, if I just do a tiny one on the corners of the triangle, it, it does sometimes sag. And that, yeah, so about every four to five inches. So I'm going to do something a little different. We're going to see if it works out. I'm taking that ball and I'm just going to press into it and make a little stamped biscuit looking, a little stamped button shape. And look how cute they are. You just start with a little ball and then we'll go straight down on this one. And because the form is still under it, I don't have to worry about changing the shape or anything. And then just go back in with your sponge and clean up any rough edges you might have or anything going on. And, and that's it. And the actual pressing down with the stamp helped join it even more. Although I slipped and scored the feet, pressing it down really bonded it to that clay surface. So these guys aren't going to pop off easy. They'll stay. So there's that one. So that's going to have to sit though. We can't flip this over right now. You will get some sagging. So this one here, I will let it set. You know, it's a nice day. I might leave it out. I'm in the studio. I might wait till about four or five this afternoon. So here it's noon, a little afternoon, uh, some 25 to one. So in about four or five hours, flip it off the form and it'll be good to go. Same with the others that are still waiting. So that's what I got. That's what I got, Jeff. Yeah, thanks so much. I, <laughs> I may have done a, this a time or two. You know, you know the drill. I'm trying to fix that. So what's going on? Awesome. <laughs> hey, hey! Oh, is that Debbie and Stacy? Yay! So, Debbie Dela Cruz from De La Designs and Stacy Geller Quest, they are at Enseca right now with Jeff at his booth waving. And so I had to wave, had to wave back. So, yeah, I am disappointed I couldn't make it this year to Enseca, but there's next year, and uh, there'll be the year after and the year after, and it'll be all good. It'll be all right. So, yeah, so Jeff, um, you know, his Instagram, if you're not following Jeff, GR Pottery Forms on Instagram, you should be because he's been doing some live videos throughout Enseca. And you can search for the hashtag Enseca2022 and find some cool videos. So, all right, Jeff, thanks so much for having me on here. If you, um, hope you have an awesome rest of the Enseca. Again, you can find me at clayshare.com. You can also find me on clayshare on social media. So it's just clayshare on Facebook or clay underscore share on Instagram. So come find me and learn how to make some great pots. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jeff.